Welcome to another video of this series. We will be looking at, at arithmetic operators. So if you have a look at the Arduino reference page, you'll see that we've got access to the remainder operator, which is the same sign. Basically, it is the modulus operator. Multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, and the assignment operator. So if we go back into Tinkercad, I've got my previous code there. All I'm going to do is comment. Comment out the code. And I can make room for you to do. First thing we want to do is add a zip up loop. So I've got a void set up. Space. Then we'll add a loop function. Plus. We want to introduce the um, serial communication. So basically, uh, we program the Arduino board and uh, the USB pins, we can send data back to the computer back and forth. If you have a look at the lower pins, we've got pin zero, right, the digital side in the receive pin and pin one being the transmit pin. So we can actually have access to the um, that communication interface via these pins. We'll be using the USB. So to make use of serial, if you go back to the Arduino reference and you check communication, um, you notice we've got a stream communication and the serial communication. So select serial. And you have a bunch of functions that you can use. We are interested in the serial begin, where we will set the out rate or the speed at which we'll be transmitting the data. If you are using the Arduino IDE, you have to make sure that the, um, the way you configure your serial interface or serial monitor is of the same speed as the what the speed that you set in the code as a serial begin part of the code. So you would have the same rate of communication. There are various options. You can use 9,600, you can use 3,400, and um, you can also use different options. We will be using 9,600. It's pretty standard and it's what's used in most communication. Good. So we go back and see where we begin. So that will initialize the serial monitor. I'm in Tinkercad, put the serial monitor at the bottom here so we can use to visualize things. So we've got two key functions that we'll be using today, and it's the serial print function, help us to uh, print characters or string variables basically variables into the serial monitor interface. And the serial print will continue appending um, the variables that we print. The serial print line will end um, the line after we print the variable. Okay. So let's introduce some variables. Let's see character variables. So let's say chart calls. Um, let's use um, and variable so ninety one for example and uh, so First of all, in the loop function, we want to continuously print um, them on the same line. So we use um, serial print. And under simulation, and you notice that 91 keeps printing continuously as it goes. Same way we can print 
thumbprint M in place of uh, 91, so we'll print 95. The serial monitor and the simulation. You notice it continuously prints M. If we want to print a line, we can print line. Run the simulation, and then we'll print um, a line. Basically, just end in each line. So, if we want to see the two combined, we can write zero point. And afterwards, to a print and then end line. Then, so we should expect 91 printed and appended with M and before it moves to the next line. So each one is lying correctly for us. Good. So now we will introduce the we will introduce the. Um, Arithmetic operators. So let's say we've got um, stop the simulation clear. We keep the integer so we can get rid of the character. Let's get rid of the character variable. Integer, get rid of this one as well. And we are going to move this to the setup loop. So it runs only once. Let's say if we run it, it means the months, not several times. So in here, we can say the addition operator have my means because it one plus in the case that if we print my int, we are suspected expect the output to be 100. So let me clear the screen. There's a cleaning by making it print line. So if we print out, we notice that it is in the um, 100 as expected. Good. If we want to change it to subtraction, the same way we're going to just change the symbol to minus sign. Let's make it something that's easier to tell for all. So if it's 90 minus 9, you expect the output to be 10. And you have 10 on the next line to make it clear. You can just run it again. And we have um, 10 showing on the output. Similarly, if you want the uh, multiplication sign can have 19 times 10. And then we expect the results to be 190. So we have 190 going up on this new block pointer as expected. And also, uh, it doesn't need to be a variable being printed to a serial. Monitor, we can see from the addition or the operation in the serial monitor. Okay, we should answer to be the same, not 190. Then comes the um, working with floating point numbers, so we can change the integer to 5 and divide it. I could space there to make it clear. So the input was five divided by two. You expect the answer to be five. However, if we print it out, notice the answer is indeed. Um, of the simulation, not five times two, five divided by two. If we run it, we get an output of 
to, which is not what we expected. So what is happening? What is happening is that we are taking an integer variable and hence five is being, it's an integer and you are dividing an integer by another integer and passing it to an integer. So the resource is only taking the integer part and leaving the, the small part behind or the floating point part behind. So we need to declare it as a floating point number. So let's comment out the sign and same. Instead of my int, we define a my float. Five and so plus division to new variable that we have. If we run it this time, you still notice that the results is 2.00 as expected, but it's not exactly the answer that we were looking forward to. That's because we haven't fully um, declared the floating point variable. We have been fully um, on the compiler that we are dealing with floating point numbers. So if the variable that we are dividing, we simply do 5.00 divided by two, and time should work out. We get 2.5 as expected. And hence, when dealing with floating point numbers, you need to be careful but you indeed um, provide some depth to more numbers afterwards. You should note that floating point numbers do take a lot of memory space and as well, it's a lot, it takes a longer time to process floating point numbers and also the floating point numbers are exactly the same. So the accuracy is quite limited. Hence, if you don't need floating point numbers, do not use floating point numbers unless you really have to, unless you really understand what you are doing, unless the code requires it. Okay. So then we will um, introduce the modulus operator. So if you divide five by two, it's actually two goes into five two times and the remainder is one. So if we want to print out the remainder, the modulus operator, and we should expect an error when we run this. So the compiler complains because the modulus operator deals with integers and hence is expecting an integer and we are using the float insert. So to resolve it, we introduce integer. It is complaining. I missed something. Let's see what I missed. So go back and change what number. Brand simulation. Now it works perfectly for us dealing with clean to just when we see the remainder being one. So the modulus operator is quite useful if you want to perform operations that deals with remainder of things. Like in this particular case, we can use um, mod two to find out whether um, numbers are odd or even numbers. It's also very good at returning the the soft divisions in the rate denominator and others. So if let's say we want to find out if a um, random number is uh, so, random number is a variable with an um, odd number or an even number because the last digit is, is odd. We expect the um, answer to be one to show that it's an odd number. It's expected to get a one if we change the last digit to an even number. A zero, which is for and even numbers as well. Good. So, guys, if you want to see more about um, how to do with 
join numbers or concatenated numbers. Um, how about programming your Arduinos with uh, else? If you want to see more videos, just stay tuned for the next video.